All right, so welcome to Jack's Lug uh, for February 2021. A new year, a new disaster. Um, we're going to be playing with MediaWiki and Apache and SSL and uh, doing some forwarding using two Apache instances and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to voice it on the um, on the YouTube uh, chat or on our uh, IRC or uh, Discord. I'll, I'll be watching all three. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're gonna be more or less doing. I decided to play with a, a new app. I haven't never seen this one before. So uh, there's a little Linux draw app. Um, it's called uh, just it's called Drawing. It's a gnome gnome utility. So eh, it works all right. It's ugly as sin, but I mean that's the default. I'm sure you can change the colors and stuff. So my goal is that. Um, I've had in the past um, friends graciously um, host my uh, my wiki before, and uh, I I very much appreciate them doing it. Uh, but uh, either like they'll have a problem at their site, or like one of their coworkers will pull out a plug because he doesn't know what it is, and you know it's just kind of irritating for me because I put a lot of my stuff that I want to look at on that wiki. Now I've ended up creating an internal wiki for myself, but I really like sharing um, information and uh, helping out the community, right? So anything I can do to do that, the better. Uh, be it uh, making my own wiki and adding some resources, uh, going out and adding resources to the greater uh, wikis or um, Linux um, folks and uh, just, you know, helping people learn stuff. So I just try to help out my little side of the community and that's part of what my wiki is about. So um, I know that some people do use my wiki and it's been kind of uh, broken since February uh, when I ha had the last disaster. I kind of pseudo moved it over to uh, GitHub, but their wiki is difficult to use in any capacity. Like it's it's very limited. Um, it's it's a great resource. I I applaud them to for doing it, and it's it's awesome for very simple sites and especially sites that kind of just go over what a project is doing. It's awesome. I love it. It's just not what I was looking for for uh, dealing with my stuff. So I like using MediaWiki. And so that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, so because I've had issues in the past um, with several different hosts, and, and I'm actually going to be hosting this through one of the ones that one of my friends hosts for me, um, which, again, it's amazing. I love that. But you could do this with like an AWS host or something like a, a free or a cheap AWS host or something hosted out on the internet. Um, this allows you to not store your data somewhere that you don't have um, physical access to it, right? And so it's going to be for like shared services or um, gratis services, you know, th things where it's you're not 100% involved in these structures like we've all seen aws go down right multiple times we've seen all of those cloud services go down we've seen data centers go down we've seen isps go down and if you're trying to use your wiki and your data for yourself um and then you want to also share it to others eh, that's a problem right and so i want to be able to have that locally on my uh, little box like i'm running an odroid h2 plus which is a fantastic little machine let me tell you what so if you guys ever want to play with like low power stuff that's great it's fun so um 
I want to have that OP, and so now I do. All right. So the idea is you have clients. These clients are out on the internet. The clients want to get to your site. So in my case, they go to kapiki.annoy.us uh, or dot dev. I go to kapiki.annoy.dev. Now, because it's a dev site, a dot dev, the browser does enforcement of SSL. Um, that means that you have to have SSL. So we're going to go over that. Um, but that being said, I also want it to be over SSL when the two servers are talking to each other. So that's another point to, to add. Um, and so this is the site. I've just I've recently re put it back together. I still got to put all the pictures back in. So the picture little picture up here is gone and some of the pictures in the articles. But most of the articles are uh, whole other than the pictures. And so if you want to go look at like Odroid Portal Land, you can go in and and take a look. Well, this is a lot faster on my uh, other machine, but it also might be because I'm streaming. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, there's all the missing pictures and stuff, but I'll get around to that. But there's there's plenty of data in here and you just don't get pic pretty pictures for it. Uh, but this is what I wanted to have out on the internet. And so the clients use an external DNS to go to kapiki.annoy.dev, and that points at uh, my server, Matoko. Matoko is uh, hosted out in uh, one of our local data centers. Um, and what Matoko is doing in this case, it's uh, mostly a game server. We, we, we put like game servers and stuff on it, but it also has a web server. I don't want to host my site out there just because I've the reasons I've posted earlier, um, but also because this is fun, right? It, we're playing, we're having fun. Um, <clears throat> so Matoko is a web server. It's acting as a reverse proxy and it's acting as the SSL endpoint. So whenever the client talks to kapiki.annoy.dev, it tries to uh, initialize an SSL connection. That SSL connection cannot be interrupted in the middle of it by a proxy or anything like that without destroying the SSL connection itself. Okay, that's how SSL works. It's it's end to end, and so because it is end to end, um, either I have to directly pass the SSL packet packets using what's called an FNI proxy. Um, which is not what I want to do. I actually, uh, I don't have it configured yet on this one, but I actually want to do let this web server uh, reverse proxy be a caching reverse proxy if I can get that working. So what happens is it has to actually decode what's going on a little bit. Not very much, but just the, the tiniest bit. It can't just forward it, um, especially if I want to do caching. If I want to do caching, I have to decode it there. Okay, and so the clients make the SSL connection to the web server, and that's where the SSL is decoded. Then, with the reverse proxy, the request is then sent onto the private web host, right? And so, and I'll, I'll be showing you guys all this in code. I just wanted to have you know a walk through the, the little pretty picture to show you what's going on here. Um, this is a, this SSL endpoint then comes down. And it, it points, the proxy, the reverse proxy points at this private web host. So the request comes in, it says, oh, it's for Kapiki. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and forward that to this, this backend address. Um, it forwards the request down to this web host, which is in the internal network of, of my network. Um, that web host then says, all right, cool. I have the page for Kapiki, and then it sends the response. The response comes back to here. This part of the diagram is actually protected by a private SSL key. So it's a self-signed key, but it's trusted on both ends so that if somebody did try to do a man in the middle attack or something like that, they would not be successful because it is actually a trusted key. It's just self-signed. I had to place it in myself. Um, because I own both servers, right? 
So that's the idea. So once it gets down here, it sends the request back up. This re-decodes it, it says cool, and then it forwards it along to the client, and then you have uh, the client all happy that they got stuff, right? This is a very secure method of uh, transport. Uh, it's also kind of a man in the middle, right? Now, because you're coming to my site and I own both ends, you trust that site and then the SSL, right? But I cannot provide you with, say, a private key because the private key you wouldn't trust, right? You have to download the um, the CRT uh, to actually trust that key, but then you have to trust that that CRT is right too. And I'm not just, you know, somebody's not giving you a bogus CRT. Uh, so you're relying on a external DNS or an external SSL vendor um, that acts as a signing authority, right? And that's what I'm using um, CertBot for. So the um, the open cert people, I'm trying to remember what, let's see, CertBot. It's uh, through the EF, no, that's the EF, Let's Encrypt, yeah. So my stuff's through Let's Encrypt. Now I've heard some people say, well, I don't trust any Let's Encrypt. And it's like, eh. You know, you should trust Let's Encrypt. That's the whole point of being able to let people do SSL for free is Let's Encrypt. But if it's like a bank or, you know, Facebook or, you know, any any large institution, they're not going to be using Let's Encrypt. And if they're using Let's Encrypt, might be an issue where you're getting kind of hosed, right? And that's why a lot of the uh, like the the dot dev has ssl enforcing there's other urls that are actually and it's a real big problem when you're trying to do your own networking stuff like i do um and trying to like force your packets around the way that i want them routed right so they there's things like you know if google doesn't have a particular route or a particular dns uh or something like that it just won't work and that's a huge problem for somebody that wants to do like, you know, caching DNS at my own house, right? I want to do caching or like do whatever. You know, I'm playing around, but, you know, if I was a corporate entity, that'd be a big problem too, right? Because um, I might want to do content filtering. I might want to do caching. Uh, there's very important things with that. And you can, you can do it where it has two steps where like you build a SSL certificate um, on the like squid server and you hand it out to all the clients and then you say, you trust this squid server. And then the squid server caches everything. It actually breaks SSL, becomes a man in the middle, and then it can do all the content uh, inspection and stuff like that. But uh, with this other thing where they're like, okay, you, you know, it only resolves to this and you know, whatever else happens, that can be a problem for that type of uh, system. All right. So, when I'm in my internal network, I don't want to go to the external web server. I want to go to the internal web server. So what I do is I actually manipulate the DNS. I actually need to fix this. This doesn't work yet. But I manipulate the DNS to where instead of pointing at the outside, right now I'm going outside and then back inside. It's very inefficient. That's why this is probably slower too, is because I'm going out to the reverse proxy and then back into my network. So I'm, it's a lot of hops. Um, but the goal would be is the internal client have, uh, they all turn, point at an internal DNS, which then um, is secondary by an external DNS server. And so if I say I want to go to Kapiki, it says, oh, instead of this address, you're getting this address. Cool. And then it just goes there. That's the idea. Um, haven't gotten that one working yet. Uh, another thing is this, because it has a private SSL, I'm going to have to get all the internal clients to trust it um, or pull this, um, this SSL back that is being done there. One of the things with, um, with the CertBot stuff is it has to be done by the server that is facing the internet because what they do is they build a challenge response on the machine. They'll say, all right, I need to do a cert renew and it'll actually put a challenge response in the, the web server and then um, and I, I've had to made, make special amends for that by the way and I'll show you that uh, but it it will 
go to that, make a challenge response, and then they'll come into that site, look for that challenge response. And if it's there, then they say, cool, you're good to go. Here's your new cert. And then you get a new cert and it places it in. The cert bot is great. And it's made by, I think, uh, EFF folks. All right. It doesn't look like we have any questions. Uh, so we'll keep going. I see Will typing. We'll go ahead and pull up uh, Matoko and Batu uh, for doing the looking at this stuff. So here's Matoko. So uh, Will said that he does uh, NFS mounting on servers for challenge things. And that uh, that can lead to some interesting uh, stuff. I don't particularly like doing NFS over the internet, um, but you could probably do it securely and um, host things there. I, one of the other ways I was considering doing this is instead of, um, instead of having it be a reverse proxy, actually just r sync everything up because what i'm doing is i'm actually i like hosting media wiki using um uh no 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 sql uh or is it's not called no sql it's uh is it mm. i can't remember uh yahoo Uh, da, 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 da. oh come on! This is not what I was looking for. Let's go to installing and SQLite. That's that's what I use. SQLite. SQLite is basically a file. Um, it's very simple. It's not very efficient, but I run a really small site, and almost nobody goes to it. And this is real simple, and it's to back it up, you just copy the file, and that's it, you're done. Um, so I like SQLite, I like it a lot. <laughs> I've done it with Postgres, I've done it with MariaDB or MySQL. Um, they work great. Uh, that is the, pref I believe MySQL is the uh, preferred way that they, they tell you to use. Um, most of the tools and everything are, are, um, made to do uh, uh, MySQL as opposed to SQLite and Postgres. Postgres and SQLite are definitely second rate citizens in this environment. Um, most people use MySQL. So if you're looking for supportability, go with MySQL or MariaDB. MariaDB is uh, more or less a, just an open source branch. It's, it's, a, it's a branch of, uh, it's a fork of uh, MySQL. So, um, let's go take a look, shall we? All right. Where are my other notes? Do, 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 do. There we go. All right. So, the first thing um, we need to point at our web server. So, we used, um, I use, uh, Google DNS and um, I point at uh, ah uh, Will said MySQL is not actually free. That's uh, new to me. I thought it was there was just a straight up open source version of it, uh, but apparently it has dual licenses. Um, so MySQL is owned by Oracle now, um, and as far as I know, it's still you know. You could still download it and use it, you know, no payment, but. Oops. Ugh. Really? 
This is why this is why nobody uses uh, Yahoo. It just it like I go MySQL and it says Azure dot connect for like what dev art dot, what what does any of this have to do with MySQL? I bet you this is all like ads or something. Ads related to yeah. So literally the entire first page is ads. That's why nobody uses Yahoo. <laughs> I mean, Google's not a whole lot better at that, but you know, for serious. Ah, okay. So apparently, for uh, because of the license, MySQL is now free for FOSS projects, free and open source. But if it's not a free and open source project, like if you wanted to run it at your business, I guess, then it would not be free, which would be why uh, MariaDB became a thing. That's unfortunate. Amusingly, though, uh, Oracle Linux is becoming the new uh, family favorite because it is free. And uh, CentOS is going away, which is very unfortunate. Oh, I got to change this thing. <laughs> I don't like Yahoo. It's a terrible search engine. You know what? DuckDuckGo, that's fine. DuckDuckGo works all right. Why is this not the default? See, look, first link. DuckDuckGo is great. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Oracle Linux, I would suggest that as a, a potential uh, source for um, for CentOS. Oh, look at that. They're even advertising it for it now. Yeah, cool. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to look at the um, Apache configuration on Matoko. So on Matoko, I'm running uh, Debian. So it's going to be at the Apache 2, and then site enabled, and then I have Kapiki in here. All right. It starts off where I left off. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at both of them. This uh, Batu is actually running Gen 2, and they're irritatingly different. <laughs> like, that's, I don't think I'm running different versions. Like, I'm running. Apache 2 on both, but why the configs are different, I'm not sure. Um, but they are. It probably can take both, but. Eh. Whoops, that's where I want to go. Apache. And then V hosts. Becky. All right. Right, let's see. Oh, we got five people. Hello, five people. How are you guys doing today? Guys and gals. Good times. Uh, oh, by the way, I was going to do this on my, I have a Linux desktop. So I have a Linux and a Windows desktop because uh, I, I play games. And I did do a game uh, show off with uh, with with Linux. Uh, the problem is, is a lot of developers, like, I mean, they don't, they're not developing for Linux. So they don't really care about Linux and compatibility. And so they'll do weird stuff like uh, um, with Internet Explorer integrations and like very specialized things with like their login stuff. So like I play FF14 uh, and stuff like that. And um, the client just like it runs really, 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 really well in Linux. But once in a while, I can't log in because the Internet Exploder integration is just a little screwy and they're using some weird thing and it's like they're using some really ancient old thing that won't work with some of the newer stuff. And then it's got, you know, so it's like hooking into the Windows, whatever. And then like the game will be running great. And then once in a while, just whoop and just die <laughs> and just crash. And it's like, oh, no. And you're in the middle of like healing a bunch of people or something. That's, that's not great. So that's why I have a Linux. A Windows box, but specifically the reason that I have um, a Windows box is I have a, a Vive um, and I have the Vive wireless and there are no 
drivers for Vive Wireless for Linux. It just does not exist. I've looked all over the place. Um, probably a couple of months ago, well, probably like six months ago, I looked all over the place and there was just nothing. And that was kind of depressing. I mean, I didn't expect the, the Linux uh, support to be great, but there's none. <laughs> and it's just like, because it's kind of an edge piece of hardware, eh, there's not a whole lot of people that would try to do it. And so it's just nobody has. So it's just really unfortunate. Uh, so let's go through and look at the... Uh, also, can we talk about like Vim and them turning on this weird mouth to port where you click and it like moves the cursor? That is so irritating. And then like you middle click and it doesn't paste right. So you have to change the mouth thing. I, I do that on most of my systems. I just haven't done it here where I'd turn that off. Um, so in Debian, you do an F module mod SSL because we want to have it with um, SSL. Uh, it's actually defined in another place as 80, and then it redirects here. Uh, but actually, no, it doesn't. Because dev, if you go to um, anything.dev, it requires it to go to 443. It requires SSL. So it never actually even tries to go to 80, no matter, like if you do HTTP, colon, slash, slash, kapiki, yada, yada, dot dev, um, the browser changes it to HTTPS. It's crazy. Um, Anyway, this is just your normal, like, default uh, Apache config stuff, um, you know, boilerplate plate stuff. And down here, um, I tell it, I want the SSL proxy. The, now, these are uh, important for doing the actual uh, sending the data somewhere else, right? So I could just send it to uh, HTTP us, but then it would go over a um, non-encrypted stream to my house, and I don't want that. Even though it's just point to point, somebody could still potentially man in the middle. It's a lot harder because it's in a data center and I'm at my house and they're both wired, and it's a lot more difficult. Somebody has to like either actually get in the middle or um, you know have a, a fiber tap or like there's got to be some nefarious things going on and my routing. To, to do that, and that's another level of crazy. But that being said, I still want to protect against that type of thing. So um, I turn on an SSL proxy engine. Um, now, since I'm using a self-signed cert, I could have made it where it actually has the right peer names, but I didn't. And that's a whoopsie. And so uh, I just turned those off because it doesn't really matter. It, it has the uh, self-signed cert imported into it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And so these two are basically for this, uh, the con canonical name and the name. Now, this one's not highlighted. I rewrote it a couple of times. The Apache documentation swears to me that this is the right thing. And it works. I don't know why it's not highlighting it, but maybe it's just a problem with like the Vim filter or... Um, maybe that one's just on this version. Who knows? Um, so we have the peer check, uh, the canonical name. I'm turning that off, and I'm doing the peer check name. Turn that off too. Um, the proxy check peer expire. Uh, I have that on, and so I want to make sure that um, if the peer uh, expired, like the SSL, uh, I made a 10-year cert. So if it expires, I'll just remake it. It'll be okay. <laughs> but I'm not remaking the, a, a self-signed cert every year. That's dumb. Um, and so if it does expire for some reason, then yes, it will break. Um, then I have uh, my server name. So this is what it will respond to. So this is a, this is a virtual host. And so uh, Apache will be looking for that in the header information. And once it finds kapiki.annoy.dev, it says, cool, I will, I will take ownership of that. This proxy pass, the slash dot well known, bang, what that means is if it is a, if somebody goes to kapiki.annoy.dev slash dot well dash known, that will not be forwarded. Now, this is very important because I had to figure this out like months ago for another site I was hosting like, with the same type of thing. If you want to do, um, 
the uh, free FFL stuff. It, ha it, it goes to well dash known. If you're doing a proxy, it's going to proxy all of the traffic. If it proxies all of the traffic, it's going to proxy the well dash known. That won't work for you. Um, the only way it would work for you is if you're doing the SSL cert on the on the back end. Um, and because I want to do this as a caching server, I don't want to do that. I want this thing to decode it. Uh, so I tell it, don't don't proxy that. Do proxy uh, slash to uh, kapiki.annoy.us um, and then do a proxy pass reverse slash to that same thing. Uh, I want you to only use the newest or the highest available um, ciphers. Sorry. That protects uh, people from doing bashing attacks where they bash the um, cypher suites down. They say, no, you, uh, they'll do like a man in the middle and then uh, they'll intercept the handshake and say, hey, oh, uh, you want this really high one? No, 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 that's not available. Oh, you want that one? That's not available. Oh, you want that one? That's not available. Oh, you want this one? Well, this one I can break. So yeah, that one's available. And they'll just knock you down. The SSL cypher suite um, specification allows me to specify I only want high I don't want I can't do null and I can't do MD5 because all the MD5 ones are broken um, so I'm just doing a little extra security there not really necessary I mean it's not like it's a major site or anything like that but eh, being pedantic uh, then we have the SSL certificate file and the uh, certificate key file the certificate file um, allows you to well it's two parts of the same key the certificate file is what's given out or part of what's given out to the clients uh well it's part of the negotiation the key file is your private file never ever 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 give out your key file um you can let people see your certificate file that is public um and then this include Let's Encrypt Options SSL Apache is actually what uh, CertBot sticks in there. So CertBot will actually stick in these last three lines whenever you run it. Um, and all I run to do, uh, I'll actually give you, go ahead and show you um, how I would run uh, CertBot. So that's the config for Apache. Then you can just restart or graceful Apache, either way, graceful if you're using a site or if you're doing a site that actually has people on it. Um, but you just do uh, to to generate a real cert for that. You would just do cert bot cert bot Apache, and you can go find cert bot, you know, and then you just hit one for Apache or Matoka or whatever, and uh, it goes out. It it creates the challenge and stuff like. I, I think they'll be all right if I do it one more time. Uh, let's renew and replace it. I just did this today, so I hope they're not mad at me. Okay, cool. So um, renew, renewing an existing cert, uh, deploying the certificate, and it uh, goes ahead and, and it goes out and it says, hey, I'm, I'm going to look at this uh, site's enabled, because it goes out and it finds your, your virtual host for that. And um, because it was already enabled, it's already sitting there, it's like, oh, cool, the enhancement redirect's already set, right? So it's just like, all right, I didn't have to do anything. Um, and then it goes out and it rebuilds the certificate and it uh, it builds that for you and then it says you know congratulations and here's where your file is your you know key file you know your certificate certificate expiration date um, like their site uh, so good on the EFF folks yeah yeah certbot will throttle you but um, you know I did it. I've done it twice in one day, so like, I think it'll be all right. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's CertBot. So that builds our, the, what I've shown you up to now is this section of it. Uh, so it's just the web server and setting up the reverse proxy, right? And so I have um, a cert, that clients can talk to. Uh, the web server is listening on 443. It's trying to respond to the correct address. 
it has the SSL cert for that correct address, and um, it's pointing at the backend server. Now, what I want to do is um, we'll look at the backend server's configuration, uh, and then look at how we built the private SSL. So the backend configuration is this right here. Uh, we have a virtual host, uh, 443 again, because I only want to listen on 443 for this. I don't really care to listen on 80. I might do 80 for my internal stuff, uh, but one of the things that you have to watch out for with um, MediaWiki is it has an internal configuration that uh, will redirect you to whatever page it is uh, configured to. So I have it configured for kapiki.annoy.dev. So if you get to it somehow, like if I go to it internally or something and I go to kapiki.annoy.us, even though the web server will respond to that, even though the web server will put you into the correct place and give you everything that is right, the responses that you get for every link, every redirect, every single different thing from MediaWiki will be kapiki.annoy.dev, right? And that'll really kind of mess up your day. Now, if you go and you change the DNS and, and do different stuff, that's great. But then we have to deal with like this thing using a self-signed cert. And that's going to be what my problem will be. I haven't figured that out yet, but... Uh... I'll probably try at some point to look into that. So we have, um, really, this is the only line that we need. But, um, well, actually, we need really this one only, the dev one, not really, because the dev one's being handled by the front end server. The front end server is trying to get to it by hitting this. And so this server needs to respond on the one that the front end server is trying to hit, right? And so it's trying to hit that. Um, so it's going to respond with that. Now, whenever things respond and it, you know, responds with the kapiki.annoy.dev, that's going all the way to the client and then the client hits a link and then it goes to kapiki.annoy.dev, which is the front end server, which then comes back to the server anyway. So that path is totally fine. Uh, as you can see, it works just fine. Um, we do our include which I don't remember where that came from. That's I think that's just kind of a, a default thing in this. Uh, my document root is uh, for www.kapiki, which is where um, the site is hosted out of physically on the disk. Uh, here is the two uh, SSL certs that I made. Okay, so I made these certs. These are self-signed certs. What I had to do is I made the certs, and I'll show you how to make a cert here in a second. But I made the certs, and then I took this this certificate file and I moved it up to Motoko. So I, I copied it up to Motoko. And uh, let's see. Uh, where is that thing? Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry about that. Uh, I just need to find my cert. I'm trying to remember where it is. There it is. And then update. So on Matoko, if we go to this CA search directory, you can see that I have the cert file. This was copied. I, I made the cert here. So it makes a cert and a key file. And then I copied that up here, put it into user local share CA certificates, and then I ran um, this utility, update CA certificates for both. And what that does is it imports it. Um, well, grab it, yes, grab it, but I I didn't remember what the uh, command was or where it was sitting, so I just kind of went up and looked. Um, what he's talking about is this. So you do history, grep, update, right? So, boom. Uh, so I ran this, and uh, you can run it again. And what it is is it goes through and it, it does stuff. But uh, when I ran it, it added one, right? And so now the server trusts that certificate, right? And 
even though it's self-signed, it is secure. So if somebody else puts another, a different self-signed cert um, in there, it will reject it, right? Because it actually trusts the cert that I made. Um, so that's very important if you want to have an actual secure connection. Um, all right, and we'll get to how I generated those in a second. Um, I want to turn SSL engine on. Uh, this is different than how the uh, Debian one did it. Um, and then again, I want the highest available Cypher suites I can have. Now here, I also put in some extra restrictions. I don't want anybody talking to this server other than me and Matoko. Right. If you're some random goon on the internet, don't want you talking to the server. So I'm actually going to mitigate that in not one, but two different ways. Um, the first mitigation is here in this directory listing. So I say this directory and I say require all granted. And then I say require IP and I give it some ranges. Uh, this is the Apache 2.4 version method, I think. Uh, 2.2 is different and it's kind of irritating that they're they've changed and it's kind of, uh, it makes less sense. To, it, the, the old way made more sense to me. It like was doing like denies and requires and doing stuff, but this is apparently the proper way of doing it. Um, so I say, I want um, a couple of my networks in my house and then uh, a slash 32 of uh, Motoko's IP. Now Motoko's IP does not change, but my IP does. I use um, the Google DNS uh, dy uh, dynamic DNS, which is cool. I didn't know they had that type of thing, uh, but they do. And it works with Linux. And so I have my Linux router, which is what Batu is, um, actually go out uh, periodically and, and update its IP. Uh, I think it does it like once a minute or something crazy like that. Uh, it's whatever its default. Uh, it's, it's not probably all that much, but um, my IP here very, 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 very rarely changes, but the IP out in the data center never changes, right? So I can, I can, like I'm using DNS to point at a moving target from Matoko, but then allowances for Matoko to talk at that point that is moving around is hard coded saying like, no, only this IP can, can talk to it. If Matoko's IP changes, then I'll have to change it here and in the uh, firewall rules, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then NPM is a method, like a driver method. I couldn't really, like this is like a default that sits around in the, the Gentoo stuff and they don't have any documentation on it that I've seen in the Gentoo docs. Um, I'm sure I could find it on Apache docs if I really cared a lot, but I, I, I looked around for a minute and I just didn't, cause most of the time it's like NPM pre-fork uh, that you, ever see like npm whatever and this is just by default npm per user uh it worked i don't know it's an optimization um so that's that for bit two all right now we've established uh our client to our web server our reverse proxy and our ssl uh tunnel back here oh, it's not a tunnel but our ssl um connection back to here, our web host and our private SSL. So let's go look at how we generated our private SSL. So to generate a private SSL, um, this is the actual command I ran. Let's see if it'll paste. Boop. Yeah, cool. So uh, I used open SSL and I say rec, which I think is a request, uh, x509, which is a type, uh, nodes, I don't remember what nodes does. Days. Um, days, it defaults to 365, which is one year. I added a zero, which means 10 years. Uh, because, you know, powers. Um, new key. I'm generating a new key. RSA is the key type. Um, it was the key encrypt. It's the key crypt type. It's the cipher. Um, and then I want to do 4096. So that's actually the... Uh, it defaults to 2048, but uh, 4096 is as much as RSA will do. Now, you have to keep this in mind when you're building keys and doing different stuff, you need to understand the load of your site because encrypting and decrypting, the higher the bit, 
like the higher the bit rate, the harder it is for the computer to do it. All right. Um, so decoding and encoding. And so if you have, like if you're Google or Facebook, right? They don't want to do 4096 bits on their key. That is ridiculous. That is huge. And like they would be wasting so much CPU time just talking to people, right? Um, if you're a bank, a lot of times they don't use the top end of that. But if you're looking for a more secure thing, higher is more secure generally. Um, but, you know, most people can't uh, snatch out like even a 2048 bit RSA. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's a trade-off that you may not want to make. Just trying to say that. So key out, um, the key out is where your private key goes. And I wanted to go an Etsy SSL private and then a key name and then out, which is where my CRT file goes, which is Etsy SSL certs and then the CRT name. And that's all it is. I sent the CRT up to Motoko and did the process that I showed you guys earlier. Um, or IPv6. Nobody loves IPv6. Well, no, nobody does. Most of the documentation is written for IPv4, and IPv6 has some weird stuff where it like it's harder to route and like it's not made to be routed with like NAT and stuff like that. And like, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, I like having control over my routes and, and stuff like that. Uh, but from my perspective, IPv6 is uh, kind of a moot point because other than me going out to the internet sites um, internally, I'm never going to have more than a class A, a class A range, uh, you know, 10.0.0.0 slash eight. Like that's just obscene. Like that's an obscene number of IPs. Um, but knowing IPv6 is um, very important and knowing how it routes and how it affects things. Um, yes, and uh, Robert uh, did also mention that the 4K bit ciphers are, you know, require more horsepower, which is what I was talking about. And so if you're running like a web server off of a Raspberry Pi, in his in his example eh, you might not want to do that you know but again it's to how many hits you're going to take on on that uh site so if it's a popular site you certainly want to watch out for that or if it has the potential to be a popular site if it's not a popular site then eh, who cares you know it's, it's kind of whatever um let's see what was next Ah, firewall. All right, so the second mitigation I'm using um, is I'm doing this. I'm not going to show you my IP tables because that's mine, my house here. Um, but this is the IP tables uh, input key that I, I made for this particular note, right? And so the idea is I'm stopping the web server from talking to anything else. So it'll basically say goodbye uh, if you do get to talk to it. But this IP tables rule literally says, if it's coming in on the WAN interface and its source is Motoko's IP, protocols TCP and the destination port is 443, then accept it, okay? And then further down in the rule set, there's a reject all. Right, so it just drops all the packets that are not specifically included. And so that means that if you're even in the same data center, you're in the same IP range, you're in the same whatever, you cannot talk to my server on port 443. Only Motoko can. So unless you steal Motoko's IP, which I mean, you can do that. That's, I mean, that's totally a thing you can do. Like you can manipulate the headers you can you can manipulate all kinds of stuff the routing tables and you can get into that stream but then you have to have my ssl <laughs> and then you like yeah, it's just like there's layers it's a security onion right there's layers you want you want to have layers um so i think that's about it let me see is there anything in the picture that we wanted to keep going on Private SSL, web host, security. Um, 
web server, reverse proxy, SSL endpoint. I didn't get time to do a uh, caching proxy, but it's it's probably not all that much more difficult. It's probably just an option in the reverse proxy stuff. I might have to install something else, but um, yeah, there you go. It's my fastest uh, 55 minutes, including like, well, some little setup and stuff. So 50 minutes. <laughs> Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It was kind of a last, uh, a last minute thing. Um, and so I finally got my wiki back up. I just need to populate its, uh, its pictures again and, uh, make sure all the links and stuff work. I mean, this one, I think I just need to get rid of it cause it's never been there, but, uh, I say clean it up a little bit because it's been like a year out of service and then uh, get it back going. But uh, uh, so one question I have for uh, for DNS is uh, or from Robert here is. Um, and I'll, I'll probably respond to you in two minutes because that's how fast the. Um, to, to get a really good picture, um, you have to slow down. Uh, the stream latency. So stream latency gives you normal, low latency, and ultra low latency. Uh, normal latency is what we're using, which means that it looks good, but it takes a while to get out. Uh, I think last time we looked at it, it was like 30 seconds, but it's probably dependent on how loaded down their uh, processing is. Um, so what am I using for DNS bind? Uh, for my internal DNS, I am using DNS math. Uh, DNS MASQ. Um, that does my uh, DNS, my internal DNS. It does my um, DHCP. Um, and well, I, I guess that's about it. So it does the uh, DNS, the DHCP. Uh, it specifies um, where the TFTP server is for the boot stuff, um, all that kind of thing. So uh, I like uh, DNS Math. It's a great little um, program. It is kind of an all-in-one, so like it's not as like if you're running a DNS server for like internet services or for a company or something, you're probably going to want to look at Bind. Bind is like the big dog DNS server. It's a lot more complex to set up, but it's a lot more capable, right? Um, DNS mask is amazing for a home gamer. It is easy to configure. It runs great. And, um, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Will is not a fan of, uh, D8 DNS mask. He is, uh, a bind fan an ISC DACPD. Yeah. So yeah, ISC DACPD is, um, is the, you know, the bog standard DHCP uh, server. And so is bind, bind, uh, as I said, it's, it's great. Uh, are there any other questions? I'll wait for like 30, 45 seconds so the stream can catch up to me asking for it. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'll keep talking so we don't have dead, uh, dead air. Um, so uh, I encourage you guys to go to our, our site, uh, which is jackslug.org. And down here, um, you can see that we have uh, the YouTube stream that you're watching. And then we have our Discord server. Uh, and then we have our Lush, right? So we'll, we'll be hanging out on IRC later on. Um, but uh, we have a, a we have actually a pretty decent number of people on the Discord server. It's growing and growing. People come in and ask questions and you know uh, chew the rag and you know have have a good time on there. Uh, I very much encourage uh, folks to jump onto IRC. We had a huge amount of people on it the other day, and now we're just back down to Will, myself, and uh, JBLZ, which I'm not sure who that is, but. Um, Uh, all right, so I don't think there's any other questions. 
Uh, so I'll see you guys at the Lush. And uh, thank you very much for uh, folks coming out and uh, hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. And uh, we'll see you next month, third Wednesday of the month, every month. Um, if anybody wants to help present, uh, those are very, very welcome. Uh, I love having other people present stuff. And uh, it's a good time for, for me and, and, and the other folks. So have a nice day.